Hello everyone, uh, this is Zimwesu Gamgwa Bosco, the Teacher Wisdom Center, that is uh, Karumona in Bugesera. Uh, yes, so I, as usual, I'm your science teacher, and we always look at uh, different work. Yes, so in this time, uh, we are here providing your work, such that uh, when you're at home, you're able to follow your lessons. So the time comes that uh, you get back to school, you won't be having any problem. So please, always move with us together. And we've been moving, whereby this time we're going to look at a new topic. But before that, uh, check on the contacts because you might need us any time for any query. So look here, uh, have, the, have the contacts here. You can check us always any time, call us these contacts. We can help you, we can answer any question which you can raise. Uh, check also, you can send the emails, you can answer your query, your complaint. Uh, also on the website, Wisdom Center website, you can easily send. Uh, Anything you want us to ask, you want to ask us, we are here for you. We shall keep providing you lessons, and uh, we wish you to stay safe. Uh, keep uh, sanitizing your hands, uh, wash your hands. Uh, in case you have no sanitizer, use water and soap. Yes, keep social distance, don't move any whole leg, okay? Keep at home. We shall be providing uh, lessons as usual. So let us move on. As I, I said, that, uh, today we are looking at a new topic, and this topic uh, is simply about uh, the respiratory system. Yes, so uh, this is what we're going to look at this time. This in this unit, we're going to cover a lot of activities, but let us uh, move on, actually, uh, story by story. So from there, we want to look at first uh, some pictures, and then we see to pick uh, the idea of uh, the respiratory system. So uh, looking at these pictures, OK? Yes, uh, you can see uh, here, this side, you can see this man. You can see, you see what is, he, what is he doing? Look at this picture. Yes, yes, look at the kids here. What do you see here? They're getting surprised. They see somebody smoking. Yes, so he's inhaling in fumes uh, from cigarette. So, um, and this is, as you go on, you'll find that it's uh, concerned with the respiratory system. And uh, you find that uh, you look at uh, effects of smoking, uh, the dangers of smoking. And again, when you somebody seated near somebody who is smoking, what happens to you? So we shall look at all this and also to see how we can uh, avoid them. But uh, you can still ask yourself a given question is here. Yes, we ask ourselves here, is it right or wrong to smoke inside the house where people are? You can see, this is a man smoking. Where are kids in the room? Where are kids are? Where are there? These people are? You find that uh, they are affected. Okay, uh, where you look at the types of smoking, you'll find that uh, passive smoking, active smoking, like one smoking being the active smoker, and also aside, inhaling fumes. Yes, you might also be moving on the way, and somebody is smoking. Do you need to keep uh, moving behind the person following, inhaling the fumes? Yes, so it's not good. You find that uh, it will affect you. You'll be a passive smoker and taking in the fumes from the, the, the active smoker. And then also other kind of fumes from factories, okay, talk of smoke, uh, talk of dust, all those kind of uh, inhaled gases, okay, or dust can affect the respiratory system. So you need to take care when moving in dusty places, when moving in smoky places, yes, always avoid uh, such areas, such places, because uh, they can affect your internal organs. Uh, look at how does smoke affect the health of people. Yes, so we shall also look at this. Okay, and then uh, what would you advise people who smoke in public places? So uh, think about these questions. What do you think should be uh, the response to these questions? Yeah, these are left for you. Uh, as, as we move on, you'll find that we shall, you'll be able to answer all these questions. Yes, so moving on, we need to understand properly, yes, the, the term respiration, or looking at the respiratory system. So when we look at uh, uh, the respiratory system, we need to define the term properly, respiration, because uh, this system involves organs, okay, uh, that are, are used in respiration. So in this, we need to just look at first the term respiration. Uh, respiration is simply the process by which food, uh, sorry, by which the body uses food Okay, and oxygen to release energy, heat, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. 
So when you look at this uh, process, you find that uh, in this process of respiration, you find that uh, uh, food is burnt in the body using oxygen to release or to give out products like energy, okay, heat, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. So these are simply products of respiration. Uh, yes, so we, one can also simply define respiration as the process by which food is burnt in the body in the presence of oxygen to release energy. Yes, as simple as this. So you can simply define respiration. Yes, we began saying that a respiration is the process by which the body uses food and oxygen to release, en to release energy, heat, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. So looking at all these okay, or look, or products, we need, to see, we need to look at them properly and get to know uh, which are the raw materials for respiration take place. What should be there? We are saying that uh, the body uses food okay, and oxygen, meaning food and oxygen, there will be the raw materials needed for respiration to take place. So you can be asked, which are the raw materials that are required or that are needed by respiration to take place? Simply talk of food and oxygen. So food is majorly uh, oxidized or broken down, okay? Let's say it's burnt. This is done majorly within the body cells, majorly after digestion, because majorly find that food, is, uh, nut food nutrients are absorbed into blood streams, taking different foods, uh, different body cells. So in these body cells, uh, food will be burnt using oxygen that is transported to those parts uh, with the help of blood. So you find that uh, uh, within this process, there will be a uh, product which are, which are going to be released or given out. So uh, having defined properly respiration, okay, uh, we can look at uh, these products. What will be the products of respiration? So you can't be asked in exams, simply try down such products. Uh, we can let us look at this just uh, briefly here. Yes, so we say that uh, respiration simply uh, can be a process by which the body uses food and oxygen to release energy, okay, heat, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. So you find that within this, we have mentioned a number of products which are given out during respiration. One C, uh, which are those products, and then which are the uh, byproducts or the, and then the, the useful products. So uh, let us first handle simply uh, the products, okay, in general, from the, our definition, we can get them. So you can simply say products of respiration. Yes, so uh, when, uh, when the body uses food and oxygen, okay, the food, immediately you find that uh, the body will actually, oxygen will burn food to, to give out different products, majorly to give, to raise energy uh, as a useful product, okay? So you can, uh, this is one of the product of respiration. So you can be asked, which are the products of respiration? Let's check number one, we can have energy. This is why you find that in most cases when you eat food, uh, you begin developing energy. So after eating food, you find that uh, within the body, yes, food will get, will get burned using oxygen. And then you find that you, you begin feeling, getting energy in your body. Remember, you begin still uh, getting, you feel heat in the body. So heat is also a product of respiration. That is heat. Okay. Uh, and then here, within respiration, uh, this kind of gas is going to be given out. Because remember, oxygen is used as a raw material, okay? And then uh, we'll burn food, to release uh, heat, energy. There's a waste product there, which is simply uh, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Yes, still we have another waste product, that is water vapor. Yes, or just water. Yes. So simply you can be asked, which are the products of respiration? From our definition, we simply said that uh, respiration is the process by which uh, the body uses food and oxygen to release heat, energy, 
carbon dioxide and water vapor. So they, these are released, so they are given out. After the process, what do we get at the end? We get heat, we get energy, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. So within this, you can be asked, which are the uh, byproducts? So for the byproducts here, we shall, we, just, we shall look at majorly the unused, those which are not required at that time by the body. Okay, they are produced at the end, but not useful uh, to the body for this case, but they can be used for other purposes. Yes, so uh, we look at energy and uh, let's say heat it will be a useful product. Then we go to the byproducts, uh, which are the other products which are not, which won't be required by the body this time with the respiration. So we can simply refer this to as byproducts. Byproducts of respiration. Okay, so uh, within this, we said for like energy, we need the energy to do different work, okay? Uh, for movement, uh, doing actually work, like muscular work, lifting things, okay? Uh, doing your work, any work you can do, you require energy most of the time. So you find that uh, uh, energy will be useful. When you come to heat, okay, heat will be useful, but you can look at excess heat, okay, which can be removed out of the body. So that can be a near waste product, you can say, Excess heat, okay, can be a byproduct. Then uh, talk of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, okay, this is a waste product. And then uh, talk of uh, water vapor. Yes, so uh, these are simply uh, waste products of respiration, excess heat, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. And when we talk about carbon dioxide and water vapor, majorly uh, they will be actually removed directly from the lungs. So you can ask you, which waste product can be, can be removed from the body through the lungs? Yes, stock of carbon dioxide and water vapor. Uh, so, and, and as we move on, you can find that for excess heat after respiration, it can be sent out through, let's say, uh, from the body, through the skin. That's when excess heat will be removed out, will be pushed out of the body. But for carbon dioxide and water vapor will be removed or excreted through the lungs. Yes, so remember, uh, these are the products of respiration. As we said, we have energy, we have heat, have carbon dioxide and water vapor. Then for the by uh, for the by uh, the the byproducts byproducts will be excess excess heat ex, uh, carbon dioxide and water vapor. Yes. So uh, since we have got a proper view of these results of respiration, we can move to the next step, uh, where we are going to look at uh, different yes uh, body organs organ, different organs of respiration. Uh, but before that we have to look at uh, simply the functions, okay? Why, why is respiration? So why do we need this, this process in the body? So major let us look at uh, the functions of uh, the respiratory system. Uh, this system majorly has a lot of functions in the body, just like other systems looked at. So you find that, uh, uh, as we said last time, the system is a combination of different body organs, okay? So it, is, it has got a number of organs which give out specific functions. So looking at uh, this system of respiration, uh, we can look at the given functions. We are saying that uh, uh, it helps in gases exchange. What do you mean by this? Uh, allowing in oxygen and then giving out carbon dioxide, as simple as that, to ex exchange of gases. So you find that uh, we breathe in oxygen and then uh, give out carbon dioxide. Uh, and then when uh, the body uses okay, energy to uh, to uh, energy, okay, to give out, or let's say the products, let's say to give out heat, to give out energy, okay, carbon dioxide, whatever. But within this, there is exchange of gases like carbon dioxide, so and and oxygen. So when we talk about gases exchange, we mean uh, like taking in oxygen and then giving out carbon dioxide, as simple as that. So they can ask you which gas uh, do we need during respiration? Uh, simply, this will be oxygen because we say the oxygen is a, a raw material for respiration because to help to burn food in the body, to release energy, to release heat, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. Uh, and then the gas, simply which is given out, as we said, is the carbon dioxide. So there's excess of gases. 
Uh, when you come to the next point, it's simply breathing, okay? So, uh, so the respiratory system helps in the breathing. Remember, it has got different organs like the nose. As you go find the track here, we shall look at uh, the, the bronchus, uh, the lungs. So all these organs support breathing. So majorly it helps in uh, breathing, which is taking in gases and giving out uh, the other gases. So you take in the fresh gases and then give out uh, the unwanted gases, majorly through the lungs. And then uh, we can also see that it helps in production of sound. Okay, uh, talk about larynx, which is uh, the voice box. It helps in uh, 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 producing sound by vibration. So they can ask you which part of the respiratory system helps in sound production. That is simply the larynx. It helps in uh, producing sound by vibration. That's why we also refer to a uh, sound box. Yeah, so I uh, can check on the next part can be protect the body from dust and the microbes that may enter through the nose. Uh, microbes we simply mean, or we refer to germs, the small living organisms that can cause diseases. So if you can't see them, they are microorganisms, these microbes. So sometimes microbes and dust can enter our body through the nose. Okay? So you find that uh, the, the, the spore system right from the nose, when there are different structures which can help in filtering dust, okay? filtering air to avoid germs from entering the, the body through the nose. That's why I find that in the nose, you have both structures like hair, the tiny hair, so which is sim simply referred to cilia, that uh, traps dust, okay? Uh, it also has, uh, when to look at uh, the nose cavity, having the mucous membrane that traps dust. So uh, we find that uh, this simply helps, okay, to prevent dust and the microbes from entering the body by the help of the nose, majorly. So these are some of the functions of this respiratory system. So from there, we look at these organs. Which organs now will support all these functions, okay? Of providing sound, of uh, supporting breathing, of protecting the body from, from microbes. Yes, so which are these organs? Because remember we said, I, I just said that, uh, that uh, when we were beginning, we said that, uh, uh, a system is a combination, okay, of different body organs. So the respiratory system has got very many parts or organs, and each organ has a specific function. So we need to look at each, okay, here. So uh, let us look at uh, the organs, the major organs or major parts of the respiratory system. You can be asked, which are the major organs of the respiratory, of the respiratory system? So there are many organs, but uh, let us look at which are the major ones, the main parts. So the main parts include uh, lungs, okay? We shall look at the major functions of the lungs, but we shall find that this one majorly help in the gases exchange, whereby they contain tiny cells or tiny bugs, which are simply called or referred to alveoli, alveoli, uh, alveoli or air sacs. And then we also have uh, the bronchi. The bronchi, this majorly uh, directs air uh, from the windy pipe to the lungs, or majorly to the, uh, to the bronchioles. So you find that from there we have the larynx. Shall we, move, uh, shall we move ahead and look at function of these parts in details? But the larynx, larynx here, majorly you find that uh, this, uh, this uh, prevents uh, the food particles uh, from falling into the air passages. Yes, and then we shall have uh, the pharynx. This is also part of uh, the respiratory system. But as we move on, we will find that uh, the pharynx is both part of the digestive system and then the respiratory system. But its function, you can say simply, this directs air uh, to the pharynx, so to, so to the larynx. And then you have the track here, windpipe. Uh, the windpipe, this one is majorly uh, made up uh, of cartilage rings which keep it open 24 hours. And majorly find that its function is to direct air. Yes, to the lungs. So uh, these are majorly the organs of the respiratory system. So when you ask majorly, what are the major parts or major organs of the respiratory system? Simply talk of lungs, a bronchi. This is a plural form. When it's one, we can simply say a bronchus. When there are many, we say bronchi. So we have larynx, uh, pharynx, uh, trachea, or windpipe. So these are the organs, the major organs of the respiratory system. 
Yeah, we have other organs, other parts, like uh, the epiglottis also be part of it. You shall look at al alve uh, alveoli, you shall look at the bronchioles. Those are other additional parts, but the major parts are simply uh, these five parts. Yes, so uh, this can push us now to the structure or the diagram of the respiratory system uh, with a number of parts. So look at this diagram here. Uh, majorly, you can identify that the number of parts. Like, uh, look at this. Uh, this is the nasal cavity, which is simply uh, uh, running from the nostrils. Nostrils where the nose, of course, like the nose has got two small holes, which are simply called nostrils, uh, from, uh, the, uh, which are the openings of the nose. And then now uh, inside, you shall have a nasal cavity, which contains mucous membrane, okay? And uh, shall look at the function of the mucous membrane, which is majorly uh, producing mucus. And then uh, when you move down here, I'll have a part this space here, which is the pharynx. This pharynx is like a junction, uh, yes, uh, which connects, which in between you find that the digestive system and then the respiratory system. So that's why we say that the pharynx is part of both the digestive system and then the respiratory system. But for this case, we should look at the function of the pharynx. I would say that there is air from the nose to the larynx. Uh, and then here we have uh, this part here, the solenic part here. If you look at a human being, the front part of the neck, there is a solenic part there we find there. You can simply refer to as a voice box, the common name, but majorly it's the larynx. The larynx, uh, its function, yes, if you look at it, uh, this majorly, if you look at this, uh, we can say prevents, if, uh, it, uh, it has got two functions. It's the passage of air, okay? It can also be part of it, uh, to, to, yes, to the track here. Then uh, uh, it also prevents food particles uh, uh, from falling into the air passages. Yes, uh, when you look at the end point of the larynx, the larynx is, uh, is, at, it is during breathing, it, it is closed by the structure, uh, the muscle, which is simply a leaf-like a leaf, a leaf -like structure. This is epiglottis. Epiglottis simply uh, prevents food particles from falling into air passages. So uh, food particles can't easily fall into larynx because of the epiglottis. So during digestion or swallowing, the epiglottis will close the larynx to prevent food particles from falling into uh, the air passages. So majorly in the exams of this brought, you find this solenic part is larynx, but the end point of the larynx is a structure which is simply referred to as uh, epiglottis that prevents food particles from falling into the air passages or the larynx. Then uh, down moving, we have this part here, which is the trachea or windpipe. Yes, uh, we shall look at it in details of the functions, but you can find that it has got cartilage rings, structures uh, that uh, keep it open 24 hours. You can ask you what's the use of uh, cartilage rings which are found in, uh, in the trachea. We simply say that uh, they, they keep the trachea or windpipe open 24 hours. So the trachea is the air passage, okay, or the passage of air, simply say to the, to the bronchus, okay, or the bronchi. So from, uh, from the trachea, you find that it will divide into two branches, okay, the left and the right. Uh, remember we say that uh, in these organs, our right side becomes left, okay, and our left becomes the right. So uh, on our right side here, we can see uh, this will be now the left uh, bronchus, and then the left side will be the right bronchus. But in this case, when you combine both of them, we can simply say uh, bronchi. So when one is uh, bronchus, when there are many in a plural form, we say bronchi. Yes, so the bronchi, these are the, uh, the branches, okay, from uh, the trachea. The trachea divides into two branches which are the uh, bronchi. So the bronchi also divides into other st further structures, more structures, which are the bronchioles. The bronchioles lead air, okay, uh, to the air sacs, or the tiny bugs, the tiny cells around structures which are found within the lungs. Uh, this is simply where gases exit take place. They can, ask, uh, they can ask you, 
Where does gaseous X intake place in the lungs? Simply say uh, in the air sacs or alveoli. Sometimes we refer them to as tiny bugs or, or tiny cells within the lungs. Uh, then from there we have a thick muscle down here, stretching. So this is simply diaphragm, okay? Yes, uh, this diaphragm divides the body into two structures, into two cavities, the chest cavity and then the abdominal cavity. So there are two cavities in the body. That's the chest cavity and the abdominal cavity. So uh, moving on, okay, uh, we can still uh, look at these functions of each part, which I've been actually going through, but I uh, had at least an overview, but we can still go through. We say that uh, uh, before the nasal cavity, we have the nose, the outer part, which has got two nostrils. Yes, so majorly, the function you can say, the nose contains mucus and tiny hair. The tiny hair is called the cilia. They can ask you what name is given the tiny hair that is from the nose. This simply is referred to as cilia. This kind of hair simply uh, is used for trapping dust. So we say cilia traps dust that enters, okay, with air. So it also, or one can simply say filters air. Yes, and then uh, the nose also has mucus, okay? This mucus helps to moisten and warm air. So they can ask us, what happens to air that enters the nose, in the nose? Simply, you can say uh, it is moistened. That's by the help of the mucus, produced by the mucus membrane. And it is filtered by the help of, uh, of, 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 of cilia, which is hair, the tiny hairs from the nose. And it is also warmed. It's made warm by the hope of the blood capillaries which supply, okay, heat, okay, of, of blood containing heat coming to the nose. So you find that this heat can easily warm this air. So as we move on, we shall look at the major three things which happen to air when it's breathed in. We shall say it is filtered, it is moistened, and then it is warmed. Yes, so we are saying, uh, uh, this, it's made up of, of soft bones called cartilage to keep it open in the time, all the time. The nose is also made up of soft bones called cartilage, okay, keeping, which keep it open. So it can't close to allow entry of air. And so we can then move on to the next part, that would be the epiglottis. We simply say that the epiglottis closes to prevent food are from entering into the windpipe on swallowing. During swallowing, the windpipe, the epiglottis will close to prevent food particles from entering or falling into the air passages, like uh, the windpipe or before windpipe, that is the larynx. And then uh, moving on, we have next part is the larynx. We simply say the larynx is also referred to as the voice box. Uh, this helps in the sound production or produces a vocal sound. To be able to speak, the larynx vibrates. So you can ask how does the larynx produce sound? Simply say by vibration. So uh, this also prevents food particles from entering into the air passages. Okay? So you can simply see here that the larynx has got two functions. That is to produce a sound, a sound or vocal sound, and then producing, or sorry, preventing food particles from entering into the air passages. And then there we go to the next part, that is the pharynx. Yes, the pharynx simply uh, is a passage of air to the larynx, okay? And we simply say that the pharynx is both part of the digestive system and uh, the respiratory system. Yes, looking at uh, the pharynx and larynx, how are they different, okay? We simply say that the pharynx is a part, or is a part of a mental canal, okay, which extends from the nasal cavity and the mouth, the larynx, okay? Yes, so you find that, uh, uh, we said that like, uh, for the pharynx, majorly is, uh, it is, uh, yes, it, it helps actually to work, will help, it majorly is part of uh, the digestive system and then uh, the respiratory system. The digestive system will pass your food to the part of the, uh, to the esophagus, okay? 
And then for the respiratory system, we pass a gel of air. That is uh, the pharynx. Okay? Uh, yes. And the pharynx, simply we say that uh, uh, it is actually it's a sound, a voice box. So it's so like it's produced sound. So you can see they are different. The pharynx is both, the pharynx is just part of, uh, of the respiratory system, but the pharynx is, part, is both part of the digestive system and the respiratory system. It's within the junction. So leading to the esophagus and leading to the trachea. That's uh, where we can easily find the, the pharynx. So the pharynx, as we said, if you look at the differences, it's uh, both part of the digestive and then the respiratory system. And for the larynx, it's only part of the respiratory system. Uh, so moving on, uh, we can look at the trachea or windpipe. We simply said that the trachea, simply it connects the nose to the bronchi. Okay? The bronchi, these are the, uh, the branches from the trachea. So we said it also contains tiny hair which trap dust. Okay? Yes, so that is simply the trachea. So can ask you for the process, the use of the trachea, simply say it's the passage of air to the bronchus or to the bronchi. So the bronchi, which is simply in a plural form and in singular is the bronchus. Okay? So you can look at the uses or the use of the bronchi. The bronchi is simply, we say, there are tubes which branch are from a trachea. Yeah, yes, they connect the left lung and the right lung, majorly transporting or directing air to, do this, to these two lungs, or the two lungs within the body. So the use of the bronchi is to direct, or you can say, is a passage of, of air to the lungs or to the bronchioles. So uh, the bronchi, they will lead air to the bronchioles. And then you go in the bronchioles, will be the smaller tubes formed from the bronchus. Okay? Yes, each bronchus can easily divide into two other smaller branches, which are the bronchioles. These bronchioles will transport or connect uh, air to what? To the alveoli or air sacs. So simply say the bronchioles lead to the air sacs, or they lead at the air sacs or the alveoli. And uh, going to the alveoli or air sacs, we say that these ones are majorly used for gases exchange, allowing the oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide. So they can ask you, where does gases exchange take place in the body? Or in the, sorry, in the lungs? Simply say in the air sacs. Then in the body to be in the lungs. Okay? So when we talk of in the, the lungs, the lungs contains the air, the air sacs or alveoli. So we can say, we can ask you, where does gases action take place in the body? Simply say the lungs, okay? So the lungs are also used for, for gases exchange. So within the gases, within the lungs, we have got the air sacs or alveoli, which, uh, which will help actually in gases exchange. Yes, so uh, these alveoli have got a number of uh, blood vessels or blood capillaries, which absorb in oxygen and pass out carbon dioxide. And this is where majorly we find that uh, especially take place because it takes place in the body cells, in the body organs. So looking at this, you take, take, taking at this and not, this not clearly you find that uh, uh, when you talk of gases exiting in the body, we say it takes place in the lungs, but in the lungs within the air sacs. So the air sacs or air sacs or alveoli is where gases exiting takes place. So I can ask you, where does gases exiting take place in the lungs? It's simply in the alveoli or the air sacs. Yes, so look, next we can look at the rib cage. The rib cage, uh, this is uh, simply, okay, this protects the heart, yes, against external harm. Uh, it's also covered actually with actual polar fluid, which prevent friction between uh, the thorax and the lungs to the ribs. So when you look at uh, the rib cage, yes, there's a good uh, kind of the polar fluid. Uh, which prevents friction, okay, between the thorax and the lungs during res respiration or breathing in and out. Yes, so the rib cage, majorly can talk of uh, this, or say protects lungs and the heart. They can ask you which two important organs uh, that the rib cage protect. Talk of the lungs and the heart. So uh, then you have the last part. We look at as they are from. This simply separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity. Remember we said that there are two cavities in the body, that is chest cavity or thoracic cavity, thoracic cavity, and then the abdominal cavity. So these cavities are 
separated by the diaphragm. The diaphragm also increases in the volume, okay, can help to increase the volume of the third cavity. That's during, uh, let's say, breathing or respiration. So when you take in oxygen, you find it can easily increase, okay, help to increase the size of the thoracic cavity or the chest to allow, in, to allow, to allow the lungs to expand, taking in more oxygen. Yes, so uh, moving on, this brings us the last part of our work for today. But we have an activity, okay? Yes, which we are required to do. Yes, so here is the learner's activity. Uh, everybody is supposed to have time, at least look at this work. From the work we've been looking at, uh, yes, we need to look at this to help ourselves uh, do different activities. So like this num number one we are given, what do you understand by the term uh, respiration? Yes, so we have defined this, we talked of this, so you can simply define this. And then we went on uh, looking at uh, the gas needed for respiration. So which gas do we, do we need in respiration? Which gas is used, yes, to burn food? We got to release energy, carbon dioxide, heat, and water vapor. So which gas do we need for respiration to take place? Which gas do we breathe in? That will be the gas that can help in respiration. Then uh, we also asked uh, to give three things that happen to air in the nose. So once air is breathed in, we say the first thing which happens, it will be filtered by the help of uh, the structures, ten, ten structures called cilia, ten hair structures called cilia. This cilia filters dust. So we can simply say that the things which happen to air, to air in the nose, number one is that uh, it is filtered. And then it is also moistened by the help of mucus, okay? And then, uh, which is produced by mucus membrane. And then uh, also the third thing which happened to air is that uh, uh, it is warmed. Remember the nose has got a number of net a network, a network of blood capillaries which can supply the nose with the heat. So this can help to warm this air. That's why when you breathe out, okay, you find that air you can breathe out will be warm due to the, the help of the blood capillary supplying heat to, the, to air breathed in. So we said that this thing happens to air when it's breathed in, we have, we number one is that uh, it is filtered, uh, it, next is that uh, it's, it is uh, moistened, and then lastly, it's warmed. So those are three things happen to air when it's breathed in. And then uh, we asked number four, that uh, after running 100 meters, Ishima was breathing faster than he normally does. Now we are asked, why does this happen? Yes, simply, why do you think one has to breathe quickly or faster? Uh, in animals like those, it's called the panting. What does the dog pant? It's immediately taking more oxygen. Okay? Yes, so uh, then now we have next number five. That is, uh, give two products of respiration. Yes, so we have looked at these products. So you can easily answer this. Remember, we said that this time we need to look at work in a way of discussion. And so if some numbers do them together, some also do them, okay? Yes, to make yourself updated with work that we can't easily forget. And then number six, we asked to name the parts of the respiratory system below. Yes, so uh, we are going to do this together. But before this, just, just look, go through number seven, number eight. Then we come back to number six properly together. So for number seven, you asked that uh, dust particles and the germs are trapped by dash and the dash in the nostrils. Yes, so which structures are found in the nose that can either trap dust and germs? We talked about these structures, okay? Yes, which are found in the nose that can either trap dust and germs. Which are they? So think of these structures and answer here. And then uh, number eight, we are saying that the dash is a sheet of muscles that separates the chest cavity from, ab from the abdomen. Yes, we discussed of this structure from the respiratory system. Yes, the, which structure is this? That it can separate the body into uh, two, two cavities, the abdominal cavity and the chest cavity. Yes, so uh, you can simply answer this, but uh, getting together, let's look at number six and then do some parts, then other parts, Yes, uh, it'll be left for you to complete as we come to the end of our lesson. So uh, let us go together looking at number six properly. Yes, so uh, you can see 
uh, on our diagram here, we are given such a number that we can easily complete. Yes, so you'll be finding such numbers. We find that it's quite easy at a discussion. Yes, we said that a diagram below shows uh, human lungs. So we are asked to use this diagram to answer questions that follow. So we, we are given questions on this diagram. But before moving ahead, look at these parts we've been discussing. Okay? We have a structure, structure here that covers uh, part P. So last time we said the part P, uh, this simply larynx. So on the top of larynx, we have a part there that will prevent food particles from falling into the larynx here and then the track here. So simply this part we're asked to answer. And that is, uh, as we move on, that is part P. So which part is that from the discussion we had that can prevent food particles uh, from falling into uh, the larynx? Yes, so if part Q is larynx, so what is the part P? Okay, so part P simply, okay, uh, it is uh, the epiglottis. Okay, yes, the epiglottis. Uh, you'll find that the epiglottis simply prevents food particles from falling into uh, the larynx. So look at the part P, part Q now. So part Q will be now uh, the larynx. Okay? Larynx. Yes, so simply larynx, as we said, uh, this is also referred to as the voice box because its major function is uh, actually to produce vocal sound. Like as one speaking, like as I'm speaking, as you speak, the voice box uh, vibrates. So you can ask you, how does the larynx produce sound? Simply say uh, by vibration, okay? Yes, so uh, larynx is also referred to uh, uh, the voice box. So look at these parts as we move on. You can be able to ask other parts. So we said that the part P is simply uh, the epiglottis, which prevents food particles from falling into the larynx. So it's mainly found on the top of the larynx. You can see this part here, covering. So it's a, like a, it's a, a it's like a, a soft leaf-like muscle that can easily cover or close larynx. But during swallowing, it can easily cover or close the larynx so that food particles can't fall into larynx. And then the, and then the trachea. Yes, so uh, we can move on looking at part ara. So what is part ara? This structure leading to the, bronchus, the, the bronchi or the bronchus. We say bronchi refers to the plural form of the bronchus. Yes, so these two structures are the bronchus. But from the, before the bronchus, we have the structure which has got the cartilage rings. Check. So which structure is that? That part are leading uh, to the bronchus. Simply so that this can be wind pipe, okay, or trachea. Simply write wind pipe. Okay. Yeah, it's like a pipe. It's like a tube. Okay, it's a tube form. Leading, okay, air to the bronchi, okay, or the bronchus. Yes, so from here we can either look at part S, check, where is part S? Uh-huh, so we said that this part, the track here, or the wind, the, the wind pipe divides into two, uh, into two parts, okay, or two tubes. So which tubes are these? So each, check on this, okay, on your, on, your, on the left and the right. On your right is now the left, and then your right, your left is the? Right, yes, so check on this. So name part S, okay, these tubes which are divided, okay, uh, from the, 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 the windpipe or the track here. Then you have parts so you can answer this properly. Then check on part T, yes, look at these tiny cells which are used for gases exchange within the lungs. Okay, what name is that? You can answer that. And then now we go to part U. Yes, we say that from the bronchi, the bronchi, okay? Which, when one is simply the bronchus. So on the right side here, the bronchus divides in two different small structures leading to the air sacs. So what are those parts, these structures, okay? These divisions here from the bronchus. Simply look at that, we discuss that, so you can easily answer this, okay? And then lastly, we have part V. Yes, this structure stretching that divides the body into two cavities, the chest cavity 
up and then down the abdominal cavity. So which part is this? And it can also help to increase the volume of the chest or the rib cage. So look at this part here, part V and then answer here. Yes. Uh, so uh, you're given time, uh, look at this work, answer all what I've been leaving for you from the beginning. This helps you to keep yourself actually ready to answer any question. So when you meet different questions, actually when you go back to school, it will be easy for you. So please, always do these activities, such that we get back to school, teachers ask you, do this work, name these parts, answer this, it will be easy for you. You won't have any problem because uh, you've been following us. So always keep following our lessons that are, we are there to help you. Yes, so this brings us to the end of the lesson today. And uh, having gone through this work, uh, to my advice, uh, we ad actually, you candidates, it's actually you to take lead in this. Okay, as we are there for you, also need, actually you, because last time we looked at interdependence, so if you're there and we are here, then you can easily move on. So please, if you there doing work, actually it's uh, our greatest happiness. So please, always do these activities, uh, follow the programs on uh, different, actually channels which we provide to you. Majorly make sure that every time we are there, you're ready to have work. And this will help you to keep yourself strong and meeting any challenging question. And then uh, uh, remember, anytime you need us, please, our uh, contacts are always there, always on the first page. Check the contacts from the videos you're watching. Call us, we can really respond, respond to you. Uh, we need to give you help to support in this time. When you're not able to reach school, please, uh, learning is just close to you. You can easily learn even without classrooms. So please enjoy our lessons always by following BTN TV. So please remember, always keep uh, watching, getting uh, YouTube videos. You'll easily get this work from there. Check on Web Wisdom Center website. You can easily be having different activities, having work for you to do. And then, uh, for in case you still use our contacts, you can easily get WhatsApp groups. We provide different questions there. In case you check on our contacts, we can easily send you directly the videos. We can give you directly on your to, to through actually WhatsApp. It's fine. So please always check on us. The parents out there, please always encourage uh, uh, the learners always to be actually uh, ready in the lessons. Get time and sit, have work, and check on them that they're doing work. Support them. That's such that when you get back to school, yes, your time with us will be beneficial. And uh, for this, we remind you, Wisdom Center is always here providing you the best. And uh, we wish you the best, please. God bless you.